Our Prime Minister has been adventuring in Nunavut this week. Uh, looking very Canadian in his red, our Globe and Mail this morning. Last week, we had a visit from a man with a passion for the North. Bill Prankard is believing God for revival. He and his spiritual son, Luke Price, have seen hundreds come to Christ in the last few months. This declaration is worth hearing again. We are serious. We believe. And Luke came to me one day. He said, we will stop, not slow down. We will stop suicide in the North. Oh, and God's evil. big enough to do that because we're declaring Canada is going to be saved and Canada is going to be turned around. Well, the North has to be. Bill's Stand on Guard for Canada meetings are helping to prepare an army across the country that is ready to minister healing where suicide, murder, violence and addictions are eroding lives and communities. The problem of suicide is 30 times greater in the north among Inuit young people than in these parts. Now the day after Bill's visit we learned of the suicide of an 11 year old boy in Repulse Bay, Nunavut. Mm. This is exactly the place where Bill is building a training and equipping center this summer. But this week, the men are headed to needy communities in Arctic Quebec and Baffin Island. An email from another woman involved in leadership training in the North, Heather Martin, confirms a very special move of God. Dated August 18th, she writes, 25 to 30 people saved today, six baptized this morning, many filled with the Spirit, and many others refreshed in an experience with Jesus this weekend. Gonna be a fire spread across the Arctic. God's Spirit is advancing in the midst of this spiritual battle. Be encouraged. That is encouraging, Moira. And earlier this year, Don Simmons, our Crossroads CEO, was asked to speak at a First Nations symposium in Thunder Bay, put on by the Anishinaabe Aski Nation, a territory covering 49 First Nations communities within northern Ontario, with a population of about 45,000 people. The event was called Embrace Life, and its primary purpose was to address the epidemic of suicide among their people. After speaking, Don was able to hand out hundreds of copies of our Not Suicide Teen Edition books. And that event was also where our camera crew connected with a young lady named Wanda Sugarhead, whose story is featured, among others, in our documentary Inside Teen Suicide. Here's a clip of Wanda. For Wanda, the pain of her parents' separation led to multiple suicide attempts and eventually a crippling drug addiction. I was into drugs and, and I was really heavy into my stuff. And I remember one day I couldn't find anything. I ripped my house upside down. I trashed my, my couch, I threw my TV because um, I was so into my drugs that I didn't, my power got cut off. My telephone got cut off. Everything was just cut. I didn't have no food. And I went inside and I, I locked the door from the outside with a padlock because I didn't want anybody to find me. I didn't want to be saved. I didn't want to be rescued. I wanted to die. I, that was it. I just, you know, I just said, I said, I don't want to live anymore. So I went into my bedroom and I grabbed my rope. And my brother Elmer said he was walking from home. And he said he was walking and he felt that the Holy Spirit was telling him to go to my house. And he saw the lock and to himself he started thinking she's not there. But um, he just, it was just such a nudge in his spirit. And he came and he ripped the door open and then he started yelling my, for my name because he saw the mess and he came running towards my bedroom. Took me down. Wanda was in critical condition as they raced to the hospital. All I remember is waking up in Sulakot. I had a neck brace. And the doctor was telling my brother that um, I'll probably have a, a scar around my neck for the rest of my life and that I'll probably have back problems for the rest of my life. And my brother said, no, I don't receive that. And he stayed beside me and he prayed and he read the Bible to me. 
and I could hear him talking to the Lord and telling him to save my life and to heal me. They took my neck brace off and the doctor was so surprised that I didn't have a scar. And um, he got me to walk up and move around and bend and, and they discharged me from the hospital. What a message of hope that is in this documentary and it points to Jesus Christ. Elmer heard the Spirit of God speaking to him and he had the insistency to literally tear that lock off the door and save his sister. Now that's exactly what I'm gonna ask you to do. 888-288-0003 is your way to say, I am going to join arms with Crossroads and we're going to reach out to a generation that unfortunately is in deep darkness. And what is so good about what we're doing is we're not just talking about the negative. Oh, there's a bright light that's shining. God is reaching right in and young people are coming to faith. My son last night called me from the United States. He had just taken this DVD into a family where the, a young lady worked on a suicide hotline and they sat down and watched it. He called me late last night. He said, Dad, have you watched the entire documentary Inside Teen Suicide? He said, we were all in tears. And his wife's sister on a hotline asked, can we get this DVD to the hotline so that they can send them out? Now, I know of thousands of places here in Canada that need this DVD, every church, every family every youth group, and of course, those valiant people like in Calgary, where Don and I sat down with the Suicide Prevention Center and they said, thank you Crossroads for what you're doing. We're partnering with them. Stan Kucher, who's creating that dynamic mental health curriculum. And it all boils down to one thing, just the compassion of Jesus Christ. Now, let me remind you from God's word, in Acts 20, we have that story of Paul in Miletus. He reflects over three years of his work in Ephesus. Ephesus was like Las Vegas on steroids. It was one of the most decadent cities of the world. Temple of Diana was there, one of the seven wonders of the world. It took 127 years to build that temple. And Paul went there and he shared, just like Elmer, his compassion drove him. He reflects on three years of establishing what we believe was one of the early megachurches of the first century. And he says in Acts 20, 31 to the leaders in retrospect, therefore watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. Now men and women, that verse is not exclusive to Paul. It is a mandate to every one of us the young people in your community, the grandchildren that are hanging out, with the kids hanging out with your grandchildren, they're depending upon you and I to do something. Together we can do it. Make that telephone call. And remember, we have a bundle set for a minimum gift of $100. We're gonna take the book that addresses the entire issue. We're gonna take the DVD, that one hour, with the curriculum on the inside, and then we're gonna take the teen version, put it together as a set, and what an invaluable set this is. I hope you'll call right now. Thank God for Don going to First Nations. Thank God for this miraculous story. And thank God for those who are saying yes. We are claiming to turn this around through the power of the gospel.